A mailing client shipped us his iPad Air for, you probably guessed it, a broken screen. And as you can see, this screen is pretty broken. So if you're watching this video because you've broken your screen on your iPad Air fifth generation and you are hoping to fix it yourself, please do be careful about those tiny pieces of glass. And if watching this video convinces you that you don't have the time or the energy to do this repair yourself, we accept mail and repairs from all over the country. So the tools you're going to need for this repair, the curved screen disassembler, which we are currently using, isopropyl alcohol, 99%. We're using a heating mat set to 80 degrees Celsius. You can get away with a heat gun or even a hair dryer. Just make sure that you don't get the iPad to the point where it is too hot to the touch. Then you risk damaging the battery and some of the internal components. And as far as spudging goes, you want to make sure that you're not going too far into the iPad. That way you don't risk damaging the flex cables or any of the internal components. And you just kind of want to poke and prod at that glue until you get it open like we just have. And once you're inside the screen, there are three Phillips screws that you have to deal with in order to remove that screen, that LCD, and after that, that's pretty much it as far as screws and flex cables are concerned. And then also that screw that holds on the faceplate for the battery connection, and you're gonna wanna disconnect that battery. Those three flex cables are for the LCD, the digitizer, and the daughter board. And there we have the screen and those are the flex cables and you can see that broken glass, my goodness. So obviously a lot of the broken glass is still attached by the glue to the edge of the screen and the vast majority of this repair is going to be patience and some TLC to get all of that glass off of the frame and then eventually most of the glue off of the frame as well. And interestingly, this is a cellular model of this device. We've done a teardown of this device before. I'll link that in the description below. And the interesting thing is that this model is totally different than the Wi-Fi version. You'll see that there are a bunch of coaxial cables and those are not present in the Wi-Fi only version. So, like I said, the bulk of this repair is going to be Dealing with the glue, dealing with the glass, that's common with any repairs with this device. This device is rated IP68 and there is a lot of glue and it's imperative that you are patient in dealing with that glue, in taking your time, using the brush, using some goof off, some isopropyl, using an X-Acto knife, using the spudging tool, anything you can to get that glue separated from the frame and from the exterior and the edges of that frame. And most repair shops really don't take the time to remove the glue so thoroughly. And the issue with that is a lot of people just assume, oh, well, it's glue, you know, so obviously the new screen has its own adhesive and they will adhere to one another, but that is not the case. And I would say probably eight out of 10 iPads, if you do not totally remove this glue as thoroughly as you possibly can over time the screen is going to lift up the new screen the replacement screen so it really is imperative that you take your time use the exacto use the goof off and make sure you get all of that glue off of the frame we find that the goof off is a bit more effective as far as removing that glue is concerned it does a better job in tandem with the blade, with the Q-tip, with the brush. Uh, the isopropyl will work, but the goof off is more effective. And the reality is there are already issues with these iPads with like bend gate and stuff like that. So if you do not remove all of this glue, then the probability is very high that you're going to end up seeing some screen bending, some screen lifting off, and you're likely to end up in another repair shop wondering what went wrong as far as your first repair. Also, of course, as you can see, and as we've mentioned, there are many coaxial cables in the housing of this device, and you really don't want to nick any of them with an X-Acto knife or even with a spudging tool. So certainly be mindful of those coaxial cables and make sure you take your time, 
It may feel like you're using more time than you need to, but ultimately it's going to save you time in the long run. And I have actually obviously sped a lot of this up. I've even cut out a lot. This takes a lot of time. It really is a job of patience more than anything. From a technical perspective, this is actually quite a straightforward repair. I mean, there's only three screws necessary, those Phillips plus the, the fourth on the battery connection. There's only three flex cables. Uh, it's just a whole lot of glue and of course the risk of that broken glass as well. It is also highly recommended that you test out the screen before you close it. Make sure that things are working with the digitizer and the LCD because once you close the screen and you have already used that adhesive that comes with the screen with those little pull tabs that you see around the frame, once it's closed, if you have any issues, it becomes a much bigger problem to deal with because then you have to deal with all that glue a second time. And again, because these products are IP68, there is just so much glue and you really don't want to deal with that. That will be a bad time for you. And part of why this is such a simple repair is because this is an iPad 5th gen. Of course, obviously, I've been preaching patience, but ultimately, again, it's only a couple screws, a couple brackets, a couple flex cables. And because it's an iPad Air 5th gen, this model does not come equipped with face ID or a proximity sensor attached to that front screen. This model comes with touch ID, so you don't have to remove that proximity sensor or that face ID. Often those face IDs are actually linked to the device, so you need to make sure that you put the same face ID sensor on the new screen. That doesn't have to happen here. Here you see we are removing those pull tabs for the adhesive, which means we are soon going to be sealing this device up. We're gonna get a nice clean seal because we spent so much time removing all that glue. Of course, you guys saw us remove that glue, but it really is all these pieces working in tandem. You wanna use some goof off, use the brush, use the X-Acto, go back and forth, take your time. I think it took us probably 25 minutes and here we go. We are sealing this device and we have already tested the screen, but we are going to do it again for the camera, I believe. And there we go. Seems to be in good working order. Now all that's left is to test to make sure that Everything is functioning in the way that it is supposed to. Swipe around, press some buttons, and it seems like things are good. So again, hopefully you aren't watching this video because you need to do this repair, but if you do, we have the parts you need at techdep.com. We have the tools you need. One click, get it quick, to your door, and we do mail-in repairs all over the country. So you are welcome to fill out a form, send us your product, and we will make sure it gets back to you totally fixed in a timely manner. Until next time, take care, guys.